glad you're all here and those watching online as well. We're, we're excited that they're here. And I want to talk about God being that we can trust God this morning. Amen. And uh, through all circumstances, we can trust him. Is that all I was supposed to say? I think so. Okay, I got a thumbs up from the man in the back. Will you open your Bibles to Psalm 115? Psalm 115. We can trust God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word that touches each and every one of our hearts. And I ask that your word would speak to us this morning and transform us and that we would become a little bit more like Jesus this morning. As we hear your word, may our hearts be ready to receive and may it produce a fruit in our lives, we ask. Amen. 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 I pray Holy Spirit speaks directly to each and every one of us specifically. Amen. Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Why do, the, why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. God is who we should trust in. When I think of trust, back when, you know, years ago, well, maybe it was just a couple years when I went to camp. <laughs> no, when I was in high school and going to camp, you would always do the trust fall. Anybody ever done the trust fall? Yeah, yeah okay. So uh, I want, uh, uh, Kent and Kaylee are gonna come up and illustrate it for us. And they're gonna show us the trust fall. Kaylee's going to just fall into her father's arms. She had, to, she had to check it out. See how far away? Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. So the trust fall. I think of the trust fall, and when you illustrate the trust fall, first of all, you want to make sure that person that's catching you is trustworthy, yeah. Yeah. right? You want to make sure that they have what it takes to catch you. You're not going to want to fall back into their arms if they don't have it. She's going to make sure, and she knows she can trust the character of her father. He's going to catch her. And also, she knows he's stronger than she is, so he's got the muscles to catch her. So that's the, 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 that person is trustworthy. But also, we want to make sure that they are someone that we can trust their character, like I said. But it would be unlike this. I found this little video clip. It would be unlike this clip that we're going to see right now that was ready to go. Unlike that, you don't want to trust people who don't have your back. You just don't want to rely on those people who think, no way, man, I don't, I don't care for you. You want to make sure it's someone who loves you, someone who cares for you, and someone who's strong enough that you're just not going to flatten them. And can I tell you, God is like that. We can trust God. He has got the character that we can trust. He is everything that we need as someone that we can trust. And he's got the strength that we can trust. He says it three times, and I love the way he says this. Watch this. He says, all you Israelites trust in the Lord. The Israelites were God's chosen people. Those people who are you and I. We are chosen by God. Then he goes a little step further in house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. Out of the Israelites, one tribe was chosen and set apart to serve the Lord. Now those who are set apart, that's us, we've been set apart. And then he says, and you who fear him, trust in the Lord. To fear him is to walk in obedience to him. Those who obey him can trust in him. Those who are set apart can trust in him. Those who are chosen of him can trust in him because he is our help and he is our shield. I love that. When I think of that God is my help, and he's my shield, I think in terms of offense and defense. I used to play softball years and years ago. And offense is when you're on the attack, when you're scoring the points, when you're making something happen. That's your help. That he's, that's what God is. He's going to help us make advance through our lives. But he's also our shield. 
There's someone that's going to protect us. When you're the defense, you're protecting your lead, hopefully, that you're already made some points, and you, you are keeping the enemy from scoring any more points. I know that's bad, but that's probably the way I viewed it when I played softball. I was pretty cutthroaty. They were the enemy. <laughs> we have to win at all costs. See, because, yeah, life should be fun, but winning is fun. So we got to win. So when God says he's my help and he's my shield, I can trust him in both areas to help me win and to help me defend against the enemy. He is my help and I can trust him because he is all powerful. In Genesis 17, we see the name of God as God Almighty, which is God El Shaddai. He is God that is sufficient. He is more than enough. He can meet every need that we ever have. That's God, El Shaddai. He's more than enough. I think of the story of the woman of Zarephath, the widow. There was a famine in the land, and Elijah is out of food, and God says, go to this widow woman, and she will make food for you. And he goes to her, and he watches her. She's gathering sticks. He says, what are you doing? Well, I'm gathering enough sticks to go home, make one more cake for my son and I, and then we'll die. Good plan. Good plan, right? I'm just going to keep what I have to myself, and then I'll die. Mm. Okay, so Elisha says to her, no, first make one small cake for me. The word of the Lord says, you'll have enough to last through the whole famine. Ooh, if we'll trust God with that little bit that we think, this is my last little bit. God's saying, give it to me. Give it to me. She does that, and God shows her he is more than enough. And she has enough to last through the entire famine because God is El Shaddai. He is more than enough. He is limitless in his capacity for you and I. That's our help. His help is also always available for you and I. He said to Joshua, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Oh, I love those words. I grab onto those words that I know God, my helper, will never leave me, never forsake me. That's my hope. It says it in Hebrews, the exact same words in Hebrews chapter 13. He says this, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? I can say it with confidence, as Aaron was saying earlier. I agree with Rachel. You should speak it out. And I can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. And in verse 8, it's the one we have on the wall up there. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That same God that helped the widow woman, that multiplied that flour and oil through the entire famine, is the same God that we serve today that will multiply and provide for you and I. He is our helper. He is always available. He will never leave us and never forsake us. He is our help. And he's also our shield. 2 Samuel 22, 31 says this about him being our shield. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. You got to catch this with me. He shields all who take refuge in him. Mm. If I had a shield and I'm out on the battlefield fighting a battle... And I just like, oh, thanks for the shield. And I set it up and I took off. I'm going, fine. I'm out from behind my shield. Right. I have to stay like that last thing said, those who fear the Lord, those who walk in obedience. I have to stay behind that shield that God has given me. I have to take step by step where the spirit leads me. That, there's where I will go. And that's where my shield protects me when I'm following in his footsteps. It says earlier in that same chapter 22, in verse uh, 3, David says this, The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people you save me. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. When I stand behind his shield... Then I love this phrase, David said, who is worthy of praise. Oh, man, worthy of praise. I love that phrase. It's just a couple of weeks ago, I was driving to the golf course. Go figure. Yeah, so I'm driving to the golf course, and I began to complain to God, sort of like a prayer complaining. You've done that. 
yeah. right? A prayer complaining, Lord, I am sick of COVID. And we call it the COVID just for fun. I'm sick of the COVID. We need to get rid of this, Lord. You need to take care of this. It's causing, there's death. There's people financially struggling because of this. There's people, you know, really afraid. There are people in our valley who are afraid and really concerned. And Lord, you need to take care of the COVID. And I'm just complaining because it's keeping all of us from doing what we want to do, filling your house full of people. And I'm just complaining. And I felt the Holy Spirit just nudge me and say, just worship me because I'm worthy of praise. So I turned on K-Love, my go-to station in the car, and I just began to worship. And I felt that irritation, that frustration just lift off of me as I just worshiped him because he's worthy of praise. Now, catch this with me. Is COVID gone? Still here. But it, that lifted from me because I gave it to God. Yeah. He is worthy of praise in the midst of our suffering. That's right. And then we experience the heaviness lift because he's worthy of praise. He is my help and he is my shield. He is always with me. I can trust him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that famous story. Everybody knows the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We will not bow down to an idol that cannot smell, taste, walk, right? All those things we read earlier in Psalm 115. We will not bow down to this idol. We will only bow down to God Almighty. The king says, then I have no alternative. I must throw you into the fiery furnace. And what were their famous words? We will not bow down. Our God will save us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to your idol. Even if we don't like that part of it. Even if this pandemic doesn't end like we want it to, we will not bow down to that idol. Even if God doesn't save me out of this, I will not bow down to any other idol. I will worship him, even if. The, can I tell you, this word right here is so full of suffering. We don't want to hear it very often, but this is so full of suffering. In Hebrews 11, we read of a list of people who never achieved what they were praying for in faith. They never received it, but they were commended for their faith. Because even if I'm not saved out of it, he is still my help and my shield. He is still God Almighty, my El Shaddai, and he is worthy of my praise. I will trust him through my suffering. I will not give up. I will trust him. Over 30 scriptures guarantee us suffering. Yep. Ouch. None of us want to hear that. We think, oh, I'm saved. Oh, wow. Finances are just going to pour in. I'm just going to be a good example of so much. God's going to give me that Audi TT yellow, cool little car. God's going to just bless. We just think all these great things are going to happen because I'm saved. No, you're guaranteed suffering. And the way we respond under suffering is our testimony. Over 30 scriptures, almost every one of the disciples, save John, who was boiled in oil, died for their faith. Died for their faith. Suffering is guaranteed. <laughs> the story of Stephen is an amazing story. It doesn't end like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where they're saved out of the fiery furnace. But Jesus does come into the furnace with them. But they're saved out. But Stephen's story doesn't end that way. Stephen is preaching that Jesus is the Christ after he's risen from the dead, and he's preaching intently to those around. And the Sanhedrin and those in authority, they get so upset, and they get some evil men together, and they say, go and, and say that Stephen is blaspheming Moses and God. Go and tell a lie. But if two of you agree, then the Sanhedrin will believe you. So they all go before the Sanhedrin and they begin to accuse Stephen. And I love this. This is, this is the way we should react. Chapter 6, verse 7 of Acts, 15, sorry. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen as, be, as he's being accused. And he didn't do this. And they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Oh my. Come on. When you're wrongly accused, do you look like an angel? When someone comes to you and says, you did this and you did that, and they're, you know, telling lies about you, and you're just like, 
you know, come on. Stephen's face was the face of an angel. He was at peace because God's got this. I can trust God. He's my help and he's my shield. The high priest says to Stephen, are these charges true? I love what Stephen does. He takes every opportunity he has to preach the gospel. Amen. Are these charges true? And Stephen begins to preach. And he goes from how God was with Abraham, and, and you can, God, Abraham could trust God because God was with him, to Joseph, and Joseph can trust God. I mean, it's like this whole chapter, to Moses and how Moses trusted God, to King David and how David trusted God. And then he gets right to them and he says, but you, I can, I can see him, you know, wow. He says, but you, you stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Oh, they were furious. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious. They gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. <laughs> Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God. In this midst of people all being mean to him, all he sees is God. So the glory of God. Amen. God, I can trust. They picked up stones and they began to throw them at him. And as the stones are attacking, this is what he says, while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And he fell asleep, he died. In the midst of being stoned, wrongly accused, and then stoned, he sees Jesus. He praises the Lord, and I, his last thought is for them. Lord, don't hold this sin against them. Wow. That is how we trust God through suffering. That is how we do it. He wasn't saved out of this. He wasn't saved. He was dead after this. And yet he trusted God through the trial. The word says in Isaiah, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you go through the rivers, you will not be washed away. When you walk through the fire, I will be with you. Wow, see, the sound system is helping me today. <laughs> it's like, yes, come on, God is with us. We will not fail because he's with us. And I love what God does for Stephen as he's being stoned. He lets him see this is where you're coming to. Yeah. You're going to be with me in heaven right now. You get the peace of heaven. Where, When John describes heaven, he says he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death, nor mourning, or crying, or pain. The old order of things is wiped away. Behold, I'm making all things new. And then he says, I'm making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. You can trust what God is saying. That someday there will be no more suffering. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. You may not receive it on this side of eternity. But how you face your suffering, how you face your suffering determines your testimony to the world around us. The way we respond is what people are looking at. Am I responding in love for them? Am I showing them that I can stand firm and trust God even in the midst of turmoil? Even when I have just enough money to maybe pay my tithes, am I being faithful to give my tithes and say, I trust God? Am I a witness to people in everything in the midst of being sick? Am I confessing my healing? Am I being a witness to people through my suffering? That's our testimony. That's, our, that's what will draw people to you because everybody experiences suffering. And what they want to see is that you have something different in your suffering. You're responding a little bit differently. You're going, you have the face of an angel. What, how are you so at peace when you can't even pay your bills? How are you? I wish I had that peace that you have. That's what draws people to us as believers, how we respond to our suffering. Isaiah prophesied, this is a very scripture in Revelation that God gave to John. He prophesied it 800 years earlier. 
He said in chapter 25 of Isaiah, he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. And then watch what Isaiah goes on to prophesy. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. God we can trust. We can put our trust in him and this is our hope, eternal life someday with him. Second Corinthians chapter one says this, God comforts us in our troubles so that, God comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in trouble who, with what we have received with, from Christ. That's why God is there for us. And we can trust him so that we could be a witness to those around us. Mm. When we think about God and we're trusting him because he's trustworthy. And it said he's my help and he's my shield. What do those two things have in common? They take me. I'm active in the equation. When I say I'm going to help you do something, that means I'm going to show up, but I'm going to help you. I'm not just going to do it and you're going to watch me. I'm going to help you. So when God says he's our help, he's saying, you have to pick up your weapon. You have to pray. You need to fast. You need to seek me. You need to do, and then I'm there to help you. We are active in this equation. When he says that I am your shield, like I said earlier, we must pick up that shield and carry it with us. Always knowing he is with us. He never leaves us. We have to pick up our shield. So this equation is that you and I together are walking in tandem with what the Spirit is asking us to do. We are in agreement with him. We are following him. This is what sets us apart. He is with us always. And His obedience, when we are in obedience to him, that's a covering over us. Come on. God is always with us. He is faithful. We can trust him. Amen? Worship team, come on up. So we're going to end with some communion. I hope you grab communion. If you didn't, grab one back in the back. But I want to close by reading one last scripture. And then we're going to sing a song together and we're going to take communion together. But I want to read one last scripture because I need, I need us to realize that this is true. That there's always going to be suffering. There's always going to be suffering. But I can trust my God will always be with me. And I think Psalm 46 sort of sounds like what we're going through right now. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with surging, there is a river whose stream make glad the city of our God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar and kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. He's our help. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He's our shield. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. And the Lord Almighty is with us. He's our help. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He is our shield. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? Lord, we choose this morning to trust and to fall into your arms. For we know that you can be trusted. You are trustworthy. You are strong enough. You are God Almighty. And we trust in you, Lord. And I ask you to come and be our help and our shield. And may we always be attentive to what you are doing and where you are going. And through all of this, everything that we face in life, Lord, all the suffering that we will see and everything that we face, 
May you be exalted and may this be our testimony that we trusted in you. Amen, amen. I think the first way we can trust him, if you'll grab your communion, is that God loved us so much. He gave his very son for us. And it says in the word that when you come together, remember what Christ did. I loved um, Brent's sermon a couple weeks ago. Let's remember this sacrifice. No longer do we have to sacrifice an animal. Jesus did it once and for all. And I want us to remember that God is a God we can trust because he made the ultimate sacrifice. Will you take your bread with me? Lord, I thank you for your body that was broken. And for those of us and those watching online who need healing right now, we pray for healing in this place. We pray that you will bring an anointing healing in each and every body because your body was broken for us. Let's partake of his body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that we can trust that your blood covers every single sin. Every sin from the day we are born until the day we die. It's an amazing miracle. We can trust you, Lord. And so, Lord, will you wipe every sin from among us as we trust in you for salvation this morning. Amen. Partake of his blood. We thank you, Lord, for you are good. Amen. Let's sing this song together.